there was a gun under this table, yeah? I'll be as dead as that kid over there. Huh? Just saw Bullet Train, which is the latest movie from action director David Leitch. He brought us John Wick and Atomic Blonde and Deadpool 2 and other big action pictures. He's got a pretty good resume. He used to be a stunt person, and now he makes these movies that employ tons of stunt people, and this one does that as well. Brad Pitt is the star, but there is an eclectic collection of really interesting actors and performers in this movie. Bad Bunny, the musician, is a major character in the film. We've got a young actor named Joey King who makes quite a statement with her performance in this movie. Aaron Taylor Johnson, who's kicking ass, and he's teamed up with a terrific actor named Brian Tyree Henry, and they do some good work together. Logan Lerman is in this movie. Zazie Beetz. Hiroyuki Sonata is in this one. I love seeing that guy on screen. He's always kicking ass. He's so formidable as an actor and as an action actor. He's just such a cool presence on screen, and he's great in this movie as well. And this is all about a bunch of operatives that are collected on a train, all of these ruthless killers and Brad Pitt is in amongst them, although he's not as ferocious a character and as ruthless a killer as maybe some of the other people that he's going to encounter on this train. Hey, this is nice. He's really put onto this train. He's got a job to steal a suitcase and get off. But of course, things get super complicated on this train and nobody can leave. And so we have this action picture that takes place on a said bullet train going from Tokyo to Kyoto. And so everything is contained and all of the fights and everything that happens has to occur in these tight spaces. And so seats get pushed and ripped and pulled out and thrown at people and all kinds of uh, goodies that you might find on a train, water bottles and nuts and all kinds of things get thrown and hurled and used as weapons. It's comedic and it's also ferocious and there's some pretty spectacular violence, which you would expect from somebody that worked on Deadpool and on John Wick. So we see some pretty incredible stunt sequences in this, even though the confines of the train, I think add a little bit to the tedium of the movie and honestly the movie is a little bit too long too it's two hours in length and that feels long for something called bullet train and it, honestly i've been on that bullet train from tokyo to kyoto and i don't think it felt as long as this movie did <laughs> which is kind of ironic but there are some really cool and entertaining elements in this thing for sure and i liked the characters that were created although sometimes a lot of the performances felt stagey and hammy and like the actors were struggling with the patter and trying to be as whip smart as it kind of looked on the page you could kind of see the script as the actors were performing it Oops. eat a bag of dicks lady I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm working on it. Particularly with Tangerine and Lemon, that's Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry. They've got some back and forth stuff, and some of it worked and some of it didn't. It's almost like they were forcing their characters to be charming and funny. In the end, they are, and they do have some great moments. But also, a lot of the character work and the performance work that these actors put together is undermined by all of these flashback sequences and all of these, you know, let's cut away outside of the train and show how these characters all interconnect in different ways and maybe this character met this other character. And so the idea and the concept of the film whip panning to a specific moment in time and giving us some context is kind of cool. The reinforcement of those ideas kind of pulls off some of the surprise and some of the mystery from the film and not all of it works. Hang in there, buddy! And so it just feels crowded and busy and overstuffed and like the movie's just working too hard. And I think some of the naturalism and some of the comedy that these actors were able to put together while they were putting these pieces together is kind of underserved. Not to say there isn't some cool ingredients and the idea that this could extend out, um, you know, clearly David Leitch is, you know, has John, everybody's got John Wick on the mind, you know? It's a juggernaut film franchise and Keanu Reeves has kind of revitalized this idea of middle-aged action heroes taking center stage a little bit. And I think Brad Pitt wanted a piece of that pie as well. And he's just so bloody charming and fun to watch. Although I did see that Sandra Bullock Channing Tatum movie, The Lost City, and that was an okay film, but Brad Pitt was the best part in that movie. And I actually liked his character more in that movie 
than this one. And this one, he's trying to find himself. He's like going through some self-help processes to try to examine his choices as a thief and as a killer. <laughs> and he's trying to find a life of nonviolence and, and uh, you know, self-love uh, all the way through the picture. And all kinds of brutal things happen to him. We ruin your life the way you ruin mine. Dude, I don't even know you. And he feels like he's just overloaded with bad luck. And so there's some interesting setups for some comedic moments and things, but Pitt comes off a little bit like he's whining and he's a little bit wimpier than I would like to see him be, you know? Not so much in the flashback sequences and some of the other things that we get to see, because he's, he's mixed up in all of these pretty heinous moments um, throughout the picture, and he can certainly handle himself, but it would be fun to see him uncaged, you know, because he feels a little bit like he's trapped himself. But it's the role, and I honestly think that's what attracted Pitt to this movie, is he didn't just want to be John Wick. He wanted to look like he was a little bit vulnerable, and uh, he can carry that off. And he does have some great repartee with various characters within the film. I had a smile on my face, I laughed a few times for sure. It's entertaining. It's just trying too hard. I think that's the, the sort of bottom line with this movie, is that it's just trying too hard. I think that this will be a fun movie to find on your home theater. Maybe it shows up on a streaming service or something, and, and it's a nice surprise that way. I don't think you're going to have a terrible time if you go out and see this in the movies. I just think that there have been way better action pictures to be excited about, and David Leitch has made a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm going to give Bullet Train a 7 out of 10.